Hello, welcome to the Jack and Joe show. Joe Sansom alongside me. And well, for the first time this season, we've suffered a defeat uh, where it's all been a bit of a shell shock for us. Left us quite shell shocked. Um, but then again, mitigating circumstances. Let, let's briefly touch on Newcastle. First of all, how are you? Uh, very well, thanks. Yeah, uh, you're completely right. Probably the first real negative result of the season, which sounds weird to say when we've already lost a couple of games. But when you look at the context of those away from home against two teams that are most likely going to finish in the top four, 2-1 losses don't seem so bad. But this one was a bit of a shell shock and it's been quite a negative place online this week. But these things are going to happen. And I think that we should keep this a positive video, breeze past Newcastle and look ahead to another big game against West Ham. Yeah, um, it's just it's one of those games where you don't really feel like you've played because because the red card came so early. You were basically out of the game for a minute six. And it, it hadn't reminded me of any game since like lockdown days where we'd be two or three down within half an hour or 20 minutes. And and uh, and you're basically completely out of the game. Uh, I, I, Nathaniel Chalibur, I mean, I touched on it on quick time with, with Stephen, but what is he playing at? His one chance, Paulinho at the team, he comes in and he dives into this silly tackle. Joe, it was infuriating. It was infuriating. And I said from my seat to the guy next to me and my dad, um, that's a red. As soon as that happened, it was just the force of the challenge and how high the foot was. It was a red. And I do think it comes from a good place. I think it comes from a place of him really wanting to prove himself. But the problem is that you can't make challenges like that in the Premier League. And when it's on one of your only chances of the season, let's face it, when you're behind someone like Jao Polina, um, it's just very unfortunate all round. And it was quite sad to see, I thought. Um, I know that he's not the most popular guy. I know that we sort of joked about when he said like Natty Chabs, all of that. Um, I was quite excited for him to sign. He's underwhelmed as an understatement, let's put it that way. Um and it's why we both said that we thought we needed another midfielder in the summer. I am sure we will look there in January. Um, but it is sad. And it was sad for the team as well. And what we were just saying off camera, Jack, was the red card is one thing. OK, let's reset. Let's be solid. Let's keep them out for as long as possible. Because at that point, mm. I didn't fancy us to score against them. They're quite a solid team. Um, and we weren't looking fantastic for that opening 10 minutes regardless. Uh, I know it's only 10 minutes. Um, but you're basically thinking, how long can we keep this nil-nil? Maybe we can nick a goal late in the game. Um, what you don't want to do is exactly what we did three minutes later, which was leave a gaping hole at our back post and then leave a gaping hole at the far post after that. It was comical defending. I think it was shell shock from the team that we, you know, we hadn't anticipated this. We hadn't got quite into our, our shape yet. We hadn't made a sub mm. to cover the midfield loss. But an infuriating goal. Obviously, it was Callum Wilson after my comments last week and my burning hatred. For I did that think man. of you and actually when that went in. I, well, I, well, I hope that when he saluted, you know that even though he was by H two H one, I think it was aimed at me in H seven. Um, I did see <laughs> Callum. Um, God, that was infuriating. But yeah, Jack, I think that first half was just a mess. After that, we never got comfortable, and the game was over ten minutes in, in my opinion. Mm. It, it felt very. 1890 vibes and um 2021 but i can't remember which season it was now 2021 i think it was but it just felt very fulham of old in the premier league and i sort of went this is what this isn't what marco silva would have signed up for this is not what he would have been planning in the week and obviously you know a red card throws us off completely you're right and uh almiron's first goal was top notch one of the best goals yep. you'll see all season at craven cottage taking nothing away from him um, but yeah, the, you know they hit the post and then and then they followed in with the th the third goal. The fourth goal was very very. I've seen that goal conceded so many times from Fulham over the years in the Premier League. It's it's untrue and um, yeah, just a bit just a bit frustrating because it, it felt like a non-event. And Newcastle were yep. just going through the motions. They had a great day out. The Newcastle fans they made a hell of a lot of noise and fair play to them getting all the way down given the the nonsense that was going on with the trains as well. So. Um, just put it behind us. Well, I'll, well, I'll ask you finally on the game. Uh, sorry, two questions. First of all, is this going to be a start of a decline where we've started the season really well? We've ended up sick. We're now only we're, we're now eighth, which is still fantastic. Um, and you know we've got West Ham to come and Bournemouth. And do we start to slide and performances start to uh, to waver a little bit, and then uh, and then we start to struggle? 
Or do you think a blip, we can get back on, on course, Paulina back in the team? And then my second question was, what about Mitro, gone off injured? Are you worried? Yeah, uh, so your first question first. Um, I think it's more of a blip and we'll obviously wait and see what happens against West Ham. But the reason I say that is as worrying as the performance was once we went down to 10, just very naive, very soft at the back, for lack of a better word. Um, you have to look at who actually played. You know, we were without both first choice fullbacks. We were without our first choice midfielder, who's arguably been our player of the season. We were without our top scorer, which I'll come on to in a second. Uh, we had injuries to Willian and Wilson still out, although he's hopefully back soon. Um, it was just one of these things where there were so many gaping holes in that team in key positions that um, it was just, you know, one of those things where it was going to go wrong. Um, I do think that um, when we have those players back, when we have Tete back at right back, when we have Robinson back at left back, Polina in the middle, or at the very least, a centre mid that's on the pitch for longer than eight minutes, we'll, we'll do much better. Um, and I think that with 11 against Newcastle and preferably our best 11, I think that we give them a good game at the very least. So that's why I think it's a blip. Um, in answer to your second question on Mitrovic, um, I'm concerned, but weirdly, I'm more concerned about our fullbacks at the moment. And the, my reason for that is I think that Vinicius, oh, he was dealt a bit of a cruel hand. He didn't have much service. He didn't have any opportunities. I thought he did OK. You know, he did nothing special. He didn't do anything bad. Um, no real chances for him to prove himself either in terms of shots on goal or headers in the box, anything like that. Um, but what I would say is that without our fullbacks, I think we're at risk of conceding uh, our first choice fullback. Sorry, I think we're conceding several chances, good chances, due to the the drop off in quality that we've seen. And when we went to the five at the back in the second half, and I know we had to do it, we just didn't have the options on the bench really. But um, Dan James right wing back, Bobby Reed left wing back, absolute war crime that was. It was awful. I mean, Dan James. I mean, uh, look, it's not his position. I'm not going to bash the guy but it just didn't work like he was caught mm. behind so many times um and i feel like you know with our first choice defense we can be solid especially with Polina in front with reed um i think we can get points but without mitrovic that's maybe where we can't get the win so it's it's difficult i, I am worried about mitrovic i would rather not play him against west ham if he's still not completely fit to make sure he's back for bournemouth and villa because i think those are the games where we really need to get I mean, ideally, six points from. Yeah. You know, it's all well and good saying, oh, we've had such a great start, blah, blah, blah. I think this is going to be different this year. You're still going to pick up points. And obviously, you know, you don't want to have two losses, three losses in a row in the Premier League. It's 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 uh, It spells trouble. So, um, West Ham on Saturday, they play tomorrow night away in Anderlecht uh, in the UEFA Conference League, 8pm kickoff. That is a big bonus for us, I reckon, because... You know, European night, and then you play on the Sunday. I think I went to go and see West Ham on the Sunday against Brighton, albeit Brighton, brilliant team this season under Graham Potter when they had Potter. And obviously, you know, on Saturday, the three all draw at Liverpool, fantastic. Um, and Brighton were brilliant. They ran the show and, and they won the game 2 0. West Ham looked very sluggish, and, you know, they hadn't picked up any points that's already this season. They won last week against Wolves 2 um, 0. Uh, so, how do you see this one going, given they've got Europe on Thursday? And uh, and yeah. Well, I think first things first is Anderlecht is a tough game for them and away from home, probably their toughest in the group, I think it's fair to say. So you would think they'll have to play their first choice team or at least something very close to it, which is an advantage because, you know, I'm not hoping that anyone picks up knocks or anything like that, but it's just about match fitness and uh, fatigue. So it, it is an advantage to us, especially if they have to be in that game for a long time. You know, they don't go 3-0 up and have the luxury like Newcastle did of taking off a few key players and resting them. Um, I think we need to be really on it because West Ham is a tough place to go, even when they're on a bad run. They'll have a bit of confidence now after that result against Wolves, their first home win of the season. Uh, probably their best performance of the season, I think it's fair to say. I've seen them a few times. Um, I thought that they were pretty impressive in attack, which is something that hasn't been said too much this season. Um, they conceded the joint least amount of goals in the Premier League, would you believe? Actually, along with, with Everton, who were two teams wow. that I didn't necessarily expect to be up there. Um, they're solid. 
they normally scrape past games if they do win or a 2-0 is probably the best it's going to get. But they've got some dangerous players in attack and I think it's all about keeping them quiet. You know, it seems like Skamaka's started to get that chance ahead of Antonio. You know, there's mm. more chances for the likes of Corne, Paqueta in behind. It's it's And Bowen as, Bowen as well. I mean, I know he broke his finger, but I'm sure he'll be fine by then. Um, it's going to be a tough game. It's not an ideal time for us to be playing them after they've got their first win at home. I know they beat Villa away a few weeks ago in a slightly less convincing performance. Mm. Um, but it's not ideal. Um, I do back us with our players back, but are they back? And maybe, Jack, this is a good time to talk about what team we would play. I guess what we have to caveat is we currently have no clue who's actually going to be fit. Yeah, it's a bit weird. We've been pretty unlucky with injuries so far this season, going all the way back to when Solomon got injured and Harry Wilson got injured. And now you add um, where well, Tete wasn't playing, Willian wasn't involved, um, Robinson's still out, Liva Kazo went off injured, Mitrovic went down. It's a bit of a nightmare. Um, but let's look at this objectively. Right. So in goal, Burnt Leno at the yep. back, I hope Tete's back. And if so, he starts for me because Babu yep. is one that makes me nervous. Um, Centre-back pairing of Ream and Tosin, I think. I think Ream still deserves to keep that place. He hasn't done anything to make me think otherwise. Left-back, well, well, that actually is... I've just yeah. realised, if there's no Robinson and no live Akazoa, we're in Michael Trouble. Like, who are we going to play? <laughs> Mbappé at left-back again? Can we can uh, we call I, I up think, and say can we have Lukaku back? <laughs> I think luckily we would have to just see what we saw against Forest. Shift Ream over and put Diop in. I can't see Ream I can't see him Bowen. giving oh, I mean just pain up against pain. But <laughs> uh Stefan Parks, it would be great to see him on the bench, but I don't think he's gonna be ready for a start. Mm. Um oh, I don't want to see him babu. To be honest, I don't want to see him babu on the pitch. I have to be honest after Saturday, Ooh. but if, if he is, I wouldn't want to see him at left back. I'd want to see him in his natural position. Although it didn't look like way on Saturday, but I'll leave it there. Um, I yeah. The midfield, I think, is pretty self-explanatory because I think Settled. you just go with the normal three. Polina yeah. back in, Reed, Pereira. Happy but days. the front three, Jack, I think for the sake of this, we know the striker is going to be Mitrovic if he's ready, and if not, it'll be Vinicius. Okay. But the wingers... I don't think Wilson is going to be ready to start, even if he's back. It's said 10, 15 days away. Uh, he might not even be ready for the bench, but if so, I don't mm. think he'll start. Willian, I think we need to presume, is out because uh, Marco Silva said he was more serious an injury. Yeah. Solomon's still out. I think everyone else is sort of up for debate. So I'd like to hear what two wingers you'd go with. Dan James on the right, Bobby D. Cordova Reed on the left. Okay. Or Cabano? I think that I would now swing Cabano for this one, purely because uh, when Cabano came on, I thought he had a great cameo against Newcastle. Yeah, he did I, very well. Mm. I think that should be rewarded. Um, and Dan James, I do still think I would be very keen to see him off the bench in a game where we're chasing. I thought he stretched it well against Nottingham Forest. Didn't really have an opportunity against Spurs. Uh, we were sort of just marked out of the game a little bit. But he was, I should say. Mm. Um, and then against you know Newcastle, there's only so much he can do. Um, I was really excited to see him up against Dan Byrne on that on our right wing, thinking that he'd have him for pace. And Dan Byrne, got to say, I know we were down to ten men and a bit ineffectual, but I thought he had a fantastic game. Yeah, and, and actually he nearly scored. He, he nearly, nearly scored. Score. And I said, I'll put a five on Byrne to score any time. I never did it yeah. again, but uh, he nearly made it one 0 Leno, by the way, made a couple of really decent saves on Saturday. Um, still showing his quality. Uh, despite us losing, you know, by four goals to one. So yeah, okay, that's an interesting team. We'll, we, I just, I suppose, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. It, it does feel a bit unlucky at the moment, but can we go there and get a result, Joe? What's your score prediction? My score prediction is that we will see a um, reaction in terms of the performance, and I think that will lead to a one-one draw, which I would take. We've said it okay. time and time again already this season. Any point away from home is great, in my opinion. Mm. And then try and win your home games. But what do you think, Jack? You've seen West Ham a little bit more than me, I think, this season. Yeah, but then again, I've seen like two sides to West Ham. Every time I go there, they they start terribly. 
and then they seem to get themselves back in the game. I we watched them against um, FCSB the day the Queen passed, and they went one nil down, and then they ended up winning the game three one. The quality showed in the end. Uh, against Brighton, they showed little fight, and Brighton basically ran them ragged. And given it's a Thursday night they play, I reckon we could have them early doors and maybe get an early goal. But I do think we're going to draw this one 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 as well. Okay, I think I think that'd be a good result. It. Yeah, it is. Second half, West Ham always turn up and they always are good and um, and are, are a threat. And they've got some magnificent players, like you said, Deck Rice, uh, Jared Bowen, Lucas Paqueta, Antonio Orskamaka. Uh, and um, one of my very, very good friends, um, also named Joe, We every Sunday we go out for a pub quiz in Tooting. And this weekend it's going to be a big, big pub quiz because it's <laughs> Fulham v West Ham. And I'm going to head straight from the ground to... Uh, I had to drop my bags off home and then go out to the pub. Um, and that's going to be an interesting one. Given I really hope the first question of the pub quiz is uh, something along the lines of who scored the fifth goal for Fulham today in the 36th minute? <laughs> well, like well you were, the, um, the quiz masters are Geordie. And one of the questions oh. on Sunday was what was the score between Fulham and Newcastle? And I generally felt like I was going to cry oh, um, through my, my hazy Jane IPA. But um, <laughs> it... It will be an interesting night. Um, I just saw Joe earlier today and we're really looking forward to him. We said there'll be no animosity because when Lookman missed that penalty, he sent me the most outrageous text saying, lul, ha, ha, And I was like, show a bit of class, honestly. that And obviously that was a terrible moment for Fulham. And oh. I, I still sort of haven't forgiven him for that. Albeit, you know, he's one of my best friends. So we both say 1-1. Yeah. Now then, on Monday night, we saw Nottingham Forest go to the King Power and lose by four goals to nil. Give me your thoughts on some of the weekend's action because there are a couple of teams we can talk about. Southampton, Wolves, who have sat their manager, Brennan Lodge, and yeah. Nottingham Forest. Uh, let's start with Forest because you led with that one. Um, okay. I watched that game, as did you, as did most people, I'm sure, because it was Monday night football. I didn't think Leicester were even fantastic on Monday. I thought they were okay. And I thought they showed some quality and that won them the game. But the worry again for Forrest is how they collapsed and mm-hmm. they collapsed. And yes, there was a few, fant- well, let's face it. Three of the four goals were fantastic. The other one was a deflected strike from outside of the box. The first um, one, yeah. Yeah. And, but again, they conceded three in what, about 10 minutes, something like that. It was mm-hmm. unbelievable. And, I don't know. I, it sounds like Steve Cooper's got a bit of a reprieve and he's got that game against Villa next Monday, but that's huge. I think that's a complete must win for them because they've had the two home games against Bournemouth and ourselves and got zero points from it. I think that the game they have won against West Ham this season, they were extremely lucky to do so. Oh, they shouldn't have won. And no, ch- I think they should have lost. They shouldn't have drawn yeah, either. Absolutely. Um, they absolutely. got battered that game. They scored a mm. goal, another one where it hits Tyler and Wani and goes in. It seems like every time he gets a chance and he actually has to think about it, he remembers he he's not very good at football. But every he time the one hits him, it goes in. Um, <laughs> I think he's a bit of a donkey up front, I've got to say, and that's probably going to bite me in whenever we play them at home, but oh well. Um, touch Chris Wood. <laughs> not literally. Um, I think... <laughs> We couldn't touch him uh, on Saturday. Was he involved? Yeah, no, I don't think he was involved. No, no, I, don't, I, I don't know, actually. He might have been on the bench. Uh, uh, he might attention. have been touching wood on the bench. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, this is a huge result for Leicester. I think the other key result this weekend was um, Bournemouth-Brentford. I mean, awful game, but Bournemouth, again, and credit to them, very solid defensively. And I do think that at this moment in time, I still think they will go down. And my reasoning for that is I don't think there's enough goals in that team and ultimately, they're reminding me slightly of that run we had when we went down last time when we had quite a long run of draws mm. and we weren't losing and we were sort of going, OK, good performance, solid performance, but we need to win the next one, draw again. Same thing. They've drawn at home to Wolves and Brentford now, drawing both nil-nil. They've got Leicester on Saturday, which is a big one. Massive. Uh, and one that they need, they need to pick up all three points in. But good start for Bournemouth. I do hope it stops because we need three teams to be worse than us but there's far less animosity now that park is gone that was the main thing mm. you know i just want three teams to be worse than us it's not bournemouth in particular that i have anything against no, at all it's anyone basically it's anyone um jack i reckon you should talk about southampton because we've both been saying about them 
It looks like Hassan Hutil is on the brink of the sack. It's another game they've played against a team that's going to be, let's face it, mid-table at the very most in Everton. They played uh, Wolves recently. They played Aston Villa recently. That's Everton as well. They lost to all of those. Oh, they yeah. drew with Leeds. You know, these are poor, poor results mm. for Southampton. Well, they were 2 0 down to Leeds and they managed to pull, back, pull it back to 2 2, which was quite impressive. But ever since then, yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. Bit of a lack of goals, lack of creativity. I, I said it a few weeks ago. I remember saying Shea Adams and, and um, up front with Adam Armstrong coming off the bench, it's not very inspiring. A Rebo, fantastic signing he is yep. and has actually done really well so far this season. Um, Lavi is injured. Yeah. Uh, James Ward Proud is, is still a fantastic player, scored a nice goal in the opening day against Spurs. Um, Bella Kochop, I think, got injured against Everton, but I, I it was on the highlights package. He got injured, but I don't know if he came back on. I need to look into that, but yeah, interesting against Everton. They took the lead, and then within five minutes, they were 2 1 down. Yeah, and weirdly, in that five minute spell, they had an unbelievable chance unbelievable to chance. go 2 1 up, and they got countered, and Dwight McNeil scored yeah. and made it 2 1. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, I can't put my finger on them right now. And I'd said to you off air, has Hassan Hootel taken them as, as far as they can go? I, I mean, he survived I, two 9 nil defeats. Yeah, I, I think I think it's got to because they were... We said last... Well, a few months ago, I guess it was, when we were previewing this season, and I compared them to us in 2012-13 under Yol, where there mm. was just a decline setting in at the end of the previous season... And we carried it into the season where we ended up going down in 2013-14. And it feels a little bit like that, where it's stagnated. The fans aren't fully happy, but they're also not all like chanting, you know, Hassan Hootel out yet. Yeah. And it feels like they're almost waiting for something to happen. So if they were to react now, depending on who they get in, it could be a masterstroke. Because I think they've got a decent team. I don't think it's world beating, but I think it is good enough to stay up overall for sure. Um. But at this moment in time, the way they're playing, them, there's a few others as well. I mean, I wouldn't put Crystal Palace down there, but I'd put Wolves. Oh, really? Uh, well, you wouldn't? I, I don't think they would at the poor. moment. They've been poor, but I think they've got enough. Do you know what I mean? I think their squad's okay. I think they've had some tough fixtures. Um, and I do think there's enough goals in that team. And I think that's the main thing. Mm, yeah. But um, Wolves, the exact opposite. There are no goals in that team. Well, there's only one one per game, really, when they score. Yeah. I, don't, I don't seem to remember them scoring more than one goal in a game this season. All we have to wonder is, brought on Diego Costa against West Ham, and he almost brought them back into the game. He looked pretty lively from what I heard and what I saw. And they've sat Bruno Large now, and you're thinking, hmm, was that too early? And they look like they're bringing in Lop 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 Lopetegui. Yeah. And if you want the lowdown on Lopetegui, just ask Jack J. Collins. He absolutely loves the guy. Um, I haven't seen enough of his managerial career to make any comment, but it seems pretty exciting. Um, of course, they brought in Matthias Nunez, who's actually been rumoured to leave the club in January to Liverpool, but I don't know. I don't think that will happen unless they play an extortionate price for him. They lost out to pa uh, Paulinho to us. Uh, Guedes was a fantastic signing. Diego Costa, dangerous at, even at his age. Um, Neto, Podence, but not much going for them. It's just, is it a blip? Is it one of those... Uh, phases where they're just nothing's going for them, or is there more to it? I mean, Max Kilman, um, Collins was a fan Nathan Collins was a fantastic signing in the summer. You look at that squad on paper and you think they've got, like you said about Southampton, they've got enough to stay up. Yeah, it's just is, is there goals in that team? I, I I do fear for them, and I'm trying to think of who they've got at the weekend because I know Southampton have Manchester City away, which is you know, you know, the hardest fixture in, in the world. In the solar system, um, yeah. I can't remember who Southampton, um, sorry, Wolves have. Wolves have got Chelsea away. Oh, tough. yeah, so they do on the Saturday. Wow, that's tough. Yeah. Um, and was there one more team to talk about? I was going to mention Palace, but you feel as though there's enough <sighs> goals in that team. I do. I, I don't think that they're, I think that they'll be reasonably down there, but I don't think they're properly at risk at this moment in time. I just mm. think that. On another day, they could have beaten Chelsea 2-1 there. It wasn't a completely deserved loss. And Conor um, Gallagher scoring, of course. Gallagher, that, is, <laughs> wow. that is very funny. Narrative. That narrative. is narrative. The Barclays is just built up and just 
pull me apart and I bleed narrative, which is honestly, <laughs> it's just fantastic. But I think one more team we should mention, and feel free to jump in if there's anyone else, is Aston Villa. Well, yeah, I was going to say Aston Villa and Leeds because they both drew it. Oh, yeah, weekend, yeah. No, no. Sinistera getting himself sent off. Silly. I mean, that was a... I got to say from Leeds, that was an example of what you should do when you go down to 10 men. And I do think that it was far easier for them. I think they were against a poorer team. And I think there was obviously a half the time left. But they they changed the game plan. They sat back and they basically just grinded out a nil-nil draw. I don't think we could have done that. So it's easy to say this in hindsight. But over the full game, I don't think you can just sit back entirely. Um, Villa battered them over the course of the game, even at... Uh, well, Leeds had a bit more of the first half than they did in the second, but second half, Villa really turned it on, partly due to the man advantage, but Ollie Watkins in particular, so many chances he had. Um, that's a big game when we play them in a couple of weeks. Uh, two weeks tomorrow, I believe. Um, mm. And really looking forward to it because I do think they'll be down there. Um, weirdly, probably one of Villa's better performances of the season, I think it's fair to say, because they've been poor overall. Um, but what do, you, what do you make of Leeds, Jack? I, I, I didn't know what to make of them this weekend because in the circumstance, it's a decent point, but I didn't think the performance was great at all, even at nil-nil. No, I actually, I didn't watch that game. Um, I was actually over at my friend Joe's, as I mentioned earlier, we were playing a yeah. bit of FIFA 23, but um, I, he- I heard it because the, the game was on in the background. And then from what I saw from the highlights, it, was, it looked pretty even up until the red card. It, it looked pretty much like it was quite a an old school battle of lots of flying tackles, lots of animosity from both sets of supporters. Um, but I, again, Jesse Marsh's leads. It's another team. I can't quite put my finger on, you know, they went to Brentford and lost five, two earlier this season and looked absolutely terrible. Then they beat Chelsea three nil, you know, a few weeks ago as well. I still feel like there are three or four teams in this premier league season that we're still trying to work out. Are they good or are they not? And I think Fulham, maybe are one of those teams as well. And I think these next round of fixtures are a huge tell as to where we are going to be by the end of the season. It's all well and good flying up the blocks and having a good start to the season, but can we maintain it? You know, when it gets into the Octobers, the Novembers, obviously the World Cup's coming up as well. That is creeping up on us, by the way. It actually isn't that far away, the World Cup. No, not at all. It's just, well, actually, what's the date right now? Um, In the fifth. A month month in two days, we play Man City. And wow. that's our second to last game before before the break. We've only got United the next weekend after that's that the final on Sunday. Game. Yeah. And all I ask, all I want is to not be in the relegation zone during the World Cup. It's just such a dampener because that will be playing on your mind and you'll be watching the around and thinking, no, oh, it's great we're falling up before half time, but you know, Fulham are 18th right now and we've only won one in six games. So hopefully it's not going to come to that. Um, it's been a magnificent start. We're still eighth in the table, Joe. And we could rise up the table on Sunday afternoon when we play West Ham. You never know. Never know. And let's look at our last away performance when, even though we went 1-0 down and even though we conceded the second goal at the end, I don't think that scoreline represents the game. We took the game to Forest and we played really well. And yes, they are probably a poorer team than West Ham, especially at this moment in time. But we've, away from home, every single game this season, I think we've been decent, even mm. in the games we've lost. So um, let's take that forward. Let's forget about Saturday. We've got our, well, let's face it, probably our most important player back in Polina. Um, I think that was proven, a lot, lot, our equal most important player along with Mitrovic, I think it's fair to say, uh, for different reasons. But he's back and hopefully he's ready to take us to another three points or at least something. Fulham, Fulham v West Ham, West Ham v Fulham at the weekend is a battle of who is the best DM outside the top six? Is it Declan Rice or Jal Polina? Really excited to see Polinia back in the team. It's a comfort blanket to have him in the team. And uh, yeah, that is it for today. Fulham, you know, I, I would say that if that was the lowest point of our season when not playing a top six team, you'll take it all day, every day. Yeah. It's one of those ones. And it was a year, it was a year, 366 days before our, I can't remember, but it was almost a year to the day we lost 4 1 to Coventry. Yeah. And that was pretty spooky and poetic, I think. Um, yep. Hopefully, we went on a magnificent run after that. We won seven in a row, didn't we? Yeah, we did. A seven I think of, <laughs> it, 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 in that run, how many did we let in? I think it was like one against QPR. I remember mm. 
We beat West Brom to nil. We beat Forest to nil. We beat Cardiff to nil. We beat Peterborough yeah. to nil. We beat Blackburn to nil. And then... Uh, we beat Peterborough after Blackburn. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go oh, for the forget archives. It. Forget I it. cannot the point, remember. The, <laughs> the point is, we're going on a seven-game winning streak. <laughs> we're beating Bournemouth 7-0. <laughs> that will be the 7-0. I, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Albeit they look very defensively organised, like you said earlier. Uh, also, sorry, final question, because I was going to mention it when you talk about Bournemouth, I completely forgot. Chris Wilder's out of a job now. Does he yeah. go to Bournemouth? Um, maybe, although I, if I was Bournemouth right now, I wouldn't want him, because I think that it's not just to do with the, the poor job he's done at Middlesbrough, it's the fact that he seems to want to jump ship every time another <laughs> job opens up, like he was linked with Burnley <laughs> immediately. And yeah. turn up one of the Burnley games. Then the moment uh, Bournemouth sacked their uh, manager Scott Parker, he was he was there, re- ready and waiting to go. But um, all I want to know is Penny for Rodrigo Moon is his thoughts because um, <laughs> you know the gaff has gone. Uh, let's see who they get in. Um, but yeah, I don't know if, if I was Bournemouth, I would probably avoid it just because I don't think that that's. The way to go right now. If I was Bournemouth, I've got to be honest, I'd be getting in Sean Deitch. Uh, I think that the way they're playing at the moment, where it's just tight football, looking to get fine margins, if you pardon the Scott Parker pun, wherever they can, there's <laughs> someone better that can do it than Gary O'Neill in Sean Deitch. Mm. And they've got solid foundations right now. They need to find some goals from somewhere. Well, it's actually weird because um, Gary O'Neill's been linked with the Middlesbrough job. They could yeah. just swap places. Which Full is circle. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you don't have to ask um, Rodrigo Munez for a penny for his thought. Just read his tweets on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and his like tweets. I'm sure you'll get the message. Joe, we said it was going to be a nice quick one today, but we'll be going for over half an hour. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you next week. Um, we'll be back next Wednesday for another Jack and Joe show when we will be reviewing West Ham, looking ahead to Bournemouth. Bournemouth. The big one. Well, it's not really the, the big, big one, one, but it's uh, it was last season, definitely. Yeah. Joe, thanks so much for being here. Thanks a lot, Jack. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, you guys are stars for watching. So Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, we hopefully will see you at the London Stadium and get a big old three points away from home. Fulham v West Ham. It's going to be big. Come on, Fulham. Fulham.